Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, everyone. Come on in, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. We are about to get started. We are about to get started. Welcome. Welcome everyone, welcome. We are about to get started. We are about to get started. We are about to get started. Welcome, come on in. Come on in all of our pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. We are about to get started. Welcome to our worship over the wire. We are glad that you are here with us on today. We're just going to give just a moment or two to allow all of our uh, parishioners and partners of PG uh, to uh, sign in. Come on, give us a heart, give us an emoji, uh, give us a sign that you are present. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. We are glad. Again, we are glad that you are present with us. We are glad that you are pre present with us. Again, we'll give just a moment. Uh, I noticed that some of you are still logging in, and for that we are thankful. We are we are thankful, and we will be giving the call to worship uh, momentarily. And brothers and sisters, again, we are thankful that you are here. Welcome again to our worship over uh, our virtual worship services. Excuse me, uh, our virtual worship services. We are thankful that you are present with us. Now, brothers and sisters, let us move into our worship. Let us move into our worship uh, with the call to worship. If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. You have been called to worship on this Valentine's Day weekend. Happy Valentine's Day to each of you. Amen. We're blessed again by your presence. Uh, we want to share in all of our aspects of worship. Uh, with that being said, if you all can just stand to endure, uh, me just sing just a verse of uh, this song. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I've ever done. I want to sing it again. Falling in love with Jesus. Yes, I did. Falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, it's the best thing that I've ever done. Listen, this is what I want to share with you. In his arms, I feel protected in his arms, 
never disconnected in his arms i feel protected that's the best thing that i've ever done come on pleasant parishioners come on fall in love with jesus falling in love with Jesus, yes I did, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, there's no place that I'd rather, rather be. All right, all right. Brothers and sisters, now we're just going to pause for a word of prayer as you have been called into worship. Again, we are thankful that you are here with us on today. We want to pause for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence and God, we thank you for your power and God, we thank you for your providence and your provision. God, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to be able to serve you. God, we thank you for this love weekend. And God, uh, let the love that we have uh, be extended to all people. Lord God, let us do as what you have called us to do. Love ye one another as Christ has loved us. God, we pray that not only that we uh, use that as a proclamation or a pronouncement, but we use it as a practice and a praxis. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray now that you have mercy upon all of your pleasant parishioners. Thank God for all of the partners of PG that seek to help this ministry to be what God has called her to be. God, we thank you for those who uh, are in place to help our ministry become more effective and efficient. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray uh, that you bless someone through uh, this ministry. And Lord God, that you bless someone uh, through uh, this particular viewing and Lord God, we pray that everything we do is because of what you have called us to be. That is in Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and come on, give uh, a hand, a emoji, uh, some claps. Let's just praise and worship God. Uh, we thank God for uh, First Lady Petrina. She's playing double duty. Uh, as first lady and as mom. So we thank God for her uh, during this time of worship. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to toss the ball to Katrina at this time. Today's moment in black history, we want to honor Dr. Kismikia Corbett. She's a viral immunologist and assistant professor at Harvard School of Public Health. We want to honor her contributions for the development of the Moderna vaccine to help us fight against the COVID-19 world pandemic. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for that um, moment in Black history. Again, brothers and sisters, we are thankful for uh, you just being here with us on today. Uh, praise God for all of you. Again, you all could have went to any other uh, platform uh, to be a part of any other worship opportunity, but thankfully uh, you've come to share with us at Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We are thankful for you. Brothers and sisters, we want to jump into the word of God. It is also Super Bowl Sunday. I know you're getting your wings and your rotel together, but first of all, brothers and sisters, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. And if you don't mind, for just a moment or two, if you don't mind, go with me into the word of God. Amen. Go with me into the word of God. Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 
Amen. First Timothy. Amen. We're glad again that everyone is with us on today. We're glad that everyone is with us on today. Uh, I pray that you all have uh, had um, a great week. I pray that you all have had a great week. Amen. We are about to jump into the word of God. First Timothy. Just a moment, brothers and sisters. First Timothy, the sixth chapter. And we are going to read verses eleven through twenty. First Timothy, the sixth chapter, and we are going to read verses 11 through 20. I am reading from the New uh, Living Translation. I am reading from the New Living uh, Translation, and there you will find words similar to this. I'll give you just a moment. It, when you have it, brothers and sisters, just say amen. Just say amen. When you have it, just say amen. And we will um, get started. We will get started. When you have it, just say amen. 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 There you will find words similar to this. But you, Timothy are a man of God. So run from all these evil things, pursue righteousness and a godly life along with the family, with the faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you which you have declared so well before many witnesses. And I charge you, I charge you, I charge you before God who gives life to all and before Christ Jesus who gave a good testimony before Pontius Pilate that you obey God's command without wavering. Obey God's command without wavering. Then no one can find fault with you from now unto our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. For at just the right time, Jesus will be revealed from heaven by the blessed uh, and only almighty God, the King of all kings, the Lord of lords. He alone can never die, and he lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach God. No human eye has ever seen him, nor ever will. All honor and power to God forever. Amen. We want to stop right there. We want to stop right there. Brothers and sisters, I just want to use 
uh, as uh, a subject for the time that we share together, a charge to keep I have. A charge to keep I have. Brothers and sisters, all of us have been charged um, uh, with a conviction and God expects us to keep it as we continue to follow him. Brothers and sisters, uh, again, we pause for a moment to pray. God, we thank you for this awesome time of engagement. God, we pray that now that the sermon uh, reaches the heart of the people, uh, the target to which it was intended, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Uh, my strength, my Lord, my strength and redeemer, uh, let us all say amen, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, God has called us to keep a charge. Uh, and as I consider this world of technology, I'm reminded uh, of uh, when we strive uh, to live in a fit world, uh, there is uh, an invention that was created uh, called a smartwatch. And in the smartwatch, brothers and sisters, the smartwatch helps us to count our steps. You may have an Apple Watch. You may have a Samsung Active. You may have a Fitbit. But in this particular uh, device, it helps you to count your steps. And I wonder, brothers and sisters, why is it important for us to count our steps? I discovered, brothers and sisters, that every adult should take at least 10,000 steps a day. So therefore, in this world of technology where we're always sitting and we're always sedentary, uh, we try to at least take we should try to take at least 10,000 steps a day. And brothers and sisters, uh, these smartwatches or these devices help us to keep up with our steps. As we consider uh, this text, brothers and sisters, we must learn how to keep our steps because the word of God shares with us uh, that it is important to run a good race. And what's most important is that we run the race the right way by keeping up and counting our steps. I'm reminded of a friend of mine in high school uh, whose coach was always on him uh, about when he ran, he had to count his steps. Brothers and sisters, it is important for us that when we run the race of life, that we keep up with our steps. In this, in a volume or in a book that is entitled um, The Purpose Driven Life, that is by Rick Warren, uh, he truthfully triumphs the tenet that life is about three things. Life is a test, life is a trust, and life is a temporary assignment. And brothers and sisters, I like that because it reminds me that since I'm not going to be here forever and none of us will be here forever, it urges us to get to a place in our faith where we count our steps. We keep up with what we are doing in life. We count our steps. If you go with me, brothers and sisters, to the text in our text, Paul, the prince of the New Testament, uh, the New Testament theologian, the, uh, the missionary minded messenger uh, and the spiritual father of Timothy writes this letter upon his release from the Roman imprison, uh, the Roman and Roman imprisonment. He writes this letter. Uh, and you can see it in Acts 20 uh, when he is imprisoned by the Roman jail in Macedonia in A.D. 62. Paul closes his letter to Timothy, his own son in faith, by reminding him that he's got a charge to keep. And if he's going to keep the charge, he's got to count his steps. 
And brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that we have, we also have a charge. God has also given us a charge and we've got to count it by our steps. Like Timothy, each of us, again, uh, need to be reminded here uh, that life is not always about being comfortable. Life is not always about being cozy and life is not always about being convenient. But brothers and sisters, life is about remembering that God has commanded us to a keep a, a charge and a charge we have to keep. This text has been tailored, uh, brothers and sisters, to teach us how Paul helps Timothy to grasp and gain this joyous jewel. There are a few things for me that emerges out of this text that I would like to share with you and I'll be a Jew do. The first thing that I see in the text, and I pray that you are reading this particular passage within the privacy of your own prayer ground, but the first thing that I see that emerges from the text is that uh, brothers and sisters, your relationship with God, it's got to be personal. It's got to be per Your relationship with God has got to be personal. In verse 11, Paul tells Timothy, but you, but you, he's indicating brothers and sisters, this is a personal thing. He, in essence, is truly telling uh, Timothy, no matter what is going around, going on around you, you've got to be connected to God personally. You are responsible for your own faith personally. Uh, he's saying to him that I know that you are in Ephesus, one of the four metropolises of the Roman world, Rome, Alexandria, and Antioch, but you've got to maintain a personal relationship with, with the Lord. And I know that you are in Ephesus where the temple of Diana is thriving, but you've got to maintain your relationship with God. I know that you, brothers and sisters, uh, he's telling them that you are around heretics, but you've got to maintain your relationship with God. One of the things that the songs I used to hear as a young person, they said, it's not my mother, it's not my father, but it is me, oh Lord, and I'm standing in the need of prayer. We've got to understand that our walk with God, our conviction, our brothers and sisters, our service to the Savior is a personal thing. One other person said that if I die and make my bed in hell, it is nobody's fault but mine. We've got to understand that our walk with God is personal. It's a personal thing. Paul was remembering uh, to tell Timothy. He was reminding Timothy that to remember it's not what uh, what's going on outside that matters, but it is what's going in on on the inside what's matters. It's not what is going on around you that matters the most, but it's going what is going on in the inside of you that matters more. If it's going to be done, brothers and sisters, you've got to understand that you've got to be able to run your own race. You've got to run your own race. God's got something personally for you to do, and God wants you to do it, and he wants you to use what you have and who you are uh, to get uh, the assignment done that he's given you. I'm reminded of a story the old preachers used to tell of a little boy uh, that went to Sunday school. Uh, little Johnny was standing up in Sunday school, and brothers and sisters, the Sunday school teacher was telling little Johnny, say, hey, little Johnny, sit down. Hey, little Johnny, sit down. Little Johnny kept standing, and the, the teacher kept telling him, hey, uh, you need to sit down. Little Johnny, sit down, sit down. And brothers and sisters, the uh, teacher said, well, if you don't sit down, I'm going to go tell your father. Uh, little Johnny finally and reluctantly sat down. But when he sat down, 
He said, I may be sitting down on the inside, but I'm standing up on the outside. Brothers and sisters, when the charge gets personal with us, we'll stand up on the inside and then it will show up on the outside. Brothers and sisters, when we, uh, when our charge is personal, no matter what is going on on the outside, we'll be able to share our conviction to a dying world. When the charge gets so personal, we'll stand up and stop seeking a chance to leave, but allow God to use us where we are. We must understand that our charge is personal. God wants to use you and God wants to use you where you are. No matter what's going on in your area, no matter what's going on in your walk of life, God wants to use you. God perhaps wants to use you on your job. God wants to use you in your family life. God wants to use you uh, in uh, your social life. God wants to use you. The next thing that emerges from the text, brothers and sisters, that you've got to play or you've got to stay in your own position. You've got to stay and play in your own position. You've got to stay in and play in your own uh, position. Brothers and sisters, on this Super Bowl Sunday, we all know how many games have been lost, how many Super Bowls uh, have uh, been thrown away, and how many games have been won because people stayed and played in their position. Brothers and sisters, understand you've got to stay in your position. Look at verse 11. Paul addresses Timothy as the person he is, a man of God. Brothers and sisters, as we pay attention uh, to this part of the text, we see that the genitive form is used here, which means a man belonging to God. This speaks to a vital concept that Paul is teaching his young protege because Timothy belongs to God. He must flee or be different or contrasting from the false teachers and heretics. In short, Paul warns Timothy to avoid the bad examples of false, of false Christ and aim for a better reflection or a better exegesis or a better example of Jesus Christ. Today, we also must not allow anything to cause us to live beneath the position that God has called us. God has called us. That's why uh, scripture shares with us that uh, be ye separate from them. Brothers and sisters, you must get to a place, brothers and sisters, that you live your life at a standard where God has called you. As a matter of fact, Paul reminds us, Paul reminds us, Paul reminds us to walk worthy of the call wherewith you are called. We've got to learn how to play our position. And our position is a position where we are striving for perfection. Our position, brothers and sisters, is to walk in a way that pleases God no matter what is going on in the world. You've got to stay in your position. Brothers and sisters, and when we play in the right position, uh, if we stay in the right position and play in the right position, brothers and sisters, uh, we can't get tackled, uh, brothers and sisters, because we are in our position. There are some things that uh, our position won't allow for if we stay where God has called us. We we won't. Uh, we are not supposed to love false teaching. That's staying in our position. We see in verse three, stay in your position by not loving false doctrine. Stay in your position. If you consider verses four and five, we can't be conceited, lacking in genuine spiritual knowledge, caught up in word battles, in constant friction. Brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to stay in our position. Even if you consider verse five, 
We are not to, we are to avoid heathen heresies and hedonism. We've got to stay in our position. Verses 6 through 10, we've got to stay in our position. We are not to be muddied by materialism. Brothers and sisters, stay in our position. Rather, we are to aim or constantly strive for other things. Verse 11 shares with us that we are to strive to uh, move to a place uh, of upright conduct. We see that in verse 11. We are to strive for upright conduct. Verse 11 again. We are to strive uh, for open uh, and for an open and obedient relationship with God. Uh, 11 again. We are to strive to have endurance and gentleness. If we look at verse 12, we are to strive uh, in trust. Look at verse 12 again. We are to strive in goodwill towards others. In other words, brothers and sisters, we are to keep on pressing and striving towards righteousness. One of the old Negro spiritual hymns that uh, the civil rights uh, 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 activists used to sing as they marched. They used to sing this old Negro spiritual song. It says, I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Turn me around, turn me around. I'm going to keep on walking, keep on marching, marching up the King's Highway. Brothers and sisters, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, one of the things that I want to suggest to you, you ought to keep on pushing, you ought to keep on moving towards righteousness. Keep on moving to where God has called you to be. Another piece as I uh, prepare to close, brothers and sisters, You've got to have a stirring pattern of struggle. You will have a stirring pattern of struggle. Look at the uh, continuous nature of Paul's word in verse 12. I want to slow it down. Fight the good fight of faith. Paul uses the present tense of the verb to help us see that it's not only a continuous action, but it is a continuous struggle. Again, brothers and sisters, it is not only a continuous action, but it is a continuous struggle. The Apostle Paul is basically telling Timothy that the Christian life is a contest requiring great purpose and discipline and doing ministry in any place, all of us know it is a struggle. It is a struggle. Yet Paul says to struggle and strain with the hope of grasping eternal life. I like how Harvey Watkins would say it. He says, I'm struggling and I'm straining, but I'm on my way. I've had tears in my eyes, but I'm on my way. I've been sick sometimes, but I'm on my way home. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, he's suggesting that he's consistent in moving in the direction of home. Brothers and sisters, there is a constant struggle in life, but we must be persistent in moving towards home. How could this be? Uh, brothers and sisters, we have to understand we've got to grasp hold of uh, uh, grasp hold of progression. And, and brothers and sisters, you've got to understand that uh, you you've got to keep moving because God has uh, the, the Lord has already won the victory for us. But we've got to keep moving. We've got, we are experiencing on this race and on this short sojourn with the Savior, we're going to experience some problems sometimes, but we've got to keep on running. I'm reminded of a race that I watched on YouTube once a man fell and hurt himself, but, it, but in his resolve to finish the race, he got up and kept running. Brothers and sisters, in a race, sometimes you'll find yourself weary and worn and sometimes a monkey on your back. 
but you've got to keep on running and our resolve must be that I'm going onward and I'm going forward in the name of Jesus. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. Life is not a sprint, but brothers and sisters, it is a marathon. And in a marathon, you'll get weary, but you got to keep going. Brothers and sisters, we've got to keep going even with monkeys on our backs. And all of us in this life know that we have experienced monkeys on our backs. We've got to go. We've got to keep pressing even with the monkey of unpaid bills. We've got to go even with the monkey of anxiety and the monkey of disappointment. We've got to keep going even uh, with the monkey of weariness. We've got to keep pressing even with the monkey of loneliness and the monkey of heartbreak. Brothers and sisters, when it gets on our back, we've got to keep pressing and don't quit. Keep fighting the good fight. Look forward unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Lay hold on to eternal life. You're not working to be saved. You're working because you are saved. Brothers and sisters, Paul tells Timothy to persevere. In keeping this commandment because God's gracious display of mercy. He also tells him that God in his source and protection. That God uh, is whatever he needs. God is his life and God is our stamina. Therefore, Paul urges him, says, Timothy, you've got to hang in there, but not just any kind of way, but you've got to be found blameless in your pressing. Brothers and sisters, he sets a standard for Timothy in that you've got to be blameless. Paul wants Timothy to be able to say that at the end of his journey, there is no shame in my game because I am pressing in perfection. Last thing I share with you is a determined, we got to have a determined pledge of service. A determined pledge of service. Moreover, the apostle uh, instructs Timothy uh, that he can look to Jesus who witnessed a good profession before Pilate. You all remember that profession, don't you? Uh, you look at Luke 23 and 4. It tells us that Jesus' service to his father was so pleasing that Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Paul encourages Timothy to serve and keep on serving until Jesus returned. He essentially tells him that if he is going to keep this service pledge, he must remember who Jesus is and what Jesus will be. Paul closes this portion of the letter in verse 15 and 16 uh, with a glorious doxology. And he praises God for giving his servants uh, staying power to keep their serving pledge for being a sovereign God. You see that in verse 15, his self-existence in verse 16, and for the fact that even when we feel like retreating, God encourages us to go forward. I want to close with a story uh, that was told uh, by Dr. Manuel Scott Sr., the well-known Texas pastor and theologian. In a certain war, a battle was getting fierce, and the commanding officer noticed that the casualties were mounting. He turned to the young bugle boy and ordered him to play a retreat song immediately. 
Several minutes passed and the commanding officer advised the bugle boy to blow his horn and sound the retreat song. Yet the bugle boy still did not play. Finally, the commanding officer cried, bugle boy, we are losing the war. I told you to play the bugle, the retreating song. The young boy looked at the commanding officer with fear in his eyes. And he came over to him. He said, sir, you know that I've done everything that you have asked me to do. I woke the soldiers up. I called them to breakfast. I called them to lunch and dinner. Whenever you gave a command, I followed it completely. But you see, I can't play the retreat song because my master never taught me how to play a retreat song. All I'm sharing with you today, pleasant parishioners, is that God has never told the believer or the Christian soldier to retreat. God has never told the church to retreat. Rather, our charge is onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going before brothers and sisters. We are called to keep on marching. If we do anything, let us go forward. Let us go forward and make it personal. Let us go forward and stay in your position. Let us go forward with a stirring pattern of struggle. Let us go for forward with a determined pledge to serve. As Christians, we need to say like the hymnologist, a charge to keep, I have. A God to glorify, who gave his son my soul to save and to fit it for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it tell of powers engaged to do my master's will. Brothers and sisters, we have a charge to keep. God wants us to continue on our journey. Keep pressing, make it personal, and understand that brothers and sisters, you are gonna have a continuing stirring of, uh, uh, of trouble. Uh, brothers and sisters, but keep on pressing. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open, I pray, that you have gained something inspirational. I pray that you have gained something encouraging. And I pray that this has been a worship service that is evoking, evoking you to live a life that is pleasantly pleasing in the sight of God. Amen. Let's give God some praise wherever you are, wherever you are. Give God some praise. Uh, I pray that uh, this uh, sermon has at least planted some seeds in your heart, even if there are some things that you didn't understand on this, this round. I pray that those seeds are planted and they take root in your heart and they come and they grow into fruition in your life in the future. Uh, may God bless you and may God keep you. Also, brothers and sisters, before we leave, we just want to thank all of our guests. If you are a guest of Pleasant Green, we are thankful for you sharing with us on our virtual worship services on today. Again, brothers and sisters, as I continue to say, you could have joined anyone else, but you've decided to join us. For that, we are thankful. We are thankful. We are thankful. We are thankful. Uh, also, brothers and sisters, we want to remind you of our opportunities, uh, our opportunities for giving. Our opportunities for giving. Our opportunities for giving. There are a couple of opportunities for giving that we want to share with you. If you like to practice generosity uh, to the ministry of Pleasant Green, 
uh, we would like to share a couple of ways that you can do that. You can send a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church uh, at 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can send a check or a money order again to 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. And brothers and sisters, uh, you can also practice generosity by logging on to our website at www.pgmbcstl.org. Uh, you can click on our giving tab. And once you click on our giving tab, brothers and sisters, uh, you can uh, give there digitally. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful for your continued giving. We appreciate you uh, and may God um, bless you. May God bless you. We are continuing to pray for our parishioners during this time, uh, this season, this uh, uncanny season. We are continuing to pray for you. We are lifting you in prayer through our um, worship over the wire, through our virtual worship services, uh, and also we have other Christian education opportunities. Our Sunday school uh, is virtual. Uh, it, it can be accessed uh, on um, Pleasant Green TV, on YouTube, and on our website. Brothers and sisters, be looking out for some announcements about our Christian education opportunities uh, that will be coming very, very soon. Uh, it will be coming to you through email and through robocall uh, and also on our social media platforms. We are going to share some information with you. Also, brothers and sisters, uh, coming up March the 12th at 10 o'clock a.m., uh, we will have our hour of power, hour of prayer, excuse me, hour of prayer, hour of prayer. Our deacons will be reaching out to their particular zones uh, just to kind of embrace uh, our membership. We have been out of church for quite a while, and we don't want to lose our momentum, and we don't want to lose uh, God's sheep. We want to continue to embrace you. So, brothers and sisters, there will be uh, an hour of prayer uh, coming up very soon. Uh, it's coming up very soon, and that is on March the 12th at 10 o'clock a.m. We will share with you uh, the conference call numbers we will share with all of this information with you very, very soon. You can be looking out for our announcements that will be coming to you soon. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful again for you today. We are blessed by your presence. With that being said, uh, we want to pause for a word of benediction. We want to pause for a word of benediction. I bless God for all February February birthdays. Happy birthday to everyone who was born in February. Happy birthday to you and may God bless you with many more. As a matter of fact, my grandmother is celebrating uh, 92, 93 years of life today and we wish her happy birthday. Uh, Zion, my son, his birthday is on Saturday and we celebrate him as well. And we celebrate everyone with a birthday in February. We are thankful. With that being said, let us pause for a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We thank you for uh, this day. We understand it as being uh, a Valentine's Day weekend. God, let us exhibit our love, our care, and our compassion for others. God, we pray now that you continue to have mercy upon our uh, parishioners and Lord God, to have mercy upon those who are bereaved, the Armstrong family, Lord God, and we ask that you give them traveling grace as they are up and down the highways. God, we pray now uh, that you do uh, what only you can do in their lives. And God, we ask that you have mercy upon those who are alone. God, we ask that you uh, go into the hospitals and not only that you deal with the patients, but you deal with the caretakers, God. Strengthen them, God. Give them what they need, the patience and the wisdom uh, to help uh, those who are sick and ailing to have 
a speedy recovery. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray uh, for uh, our first responders. We pray for law enforcement, God, and we pray for our members as that they say, stay safe in a time like this. God, we pray now that uh, 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 that in the, on this Super Bowl Sunday, God, that we continue to steal and yet give you the praise and give you all of the glory. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Let us all say virtually, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. See you next time.